Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce. And in tonight's Einstein Analytics video, we're going to take a look at sneak peeks for the summer 20 release. So uh, it seems pretty familiar to me that, uh, you know, here we are getting a summer release of Salesforce, and yet somehow there's snow on my front lawn. I mean, what gives? Come on, Buffalo. Uh, but anyway, let, let's jump right in. First thing that I'm noticing uh, off the bat, we've got a couple of new settings uh, under setup that we want to be aware of. One of them is enable the Amazon S3 output connection, and the other is use the new version of data prep in beta. Uh, for more information on these features, please check out the video that I did a couple of days ago with uh, Tim and team, where we walk through the entire uh, data prep tool, and it is just amazing. We have been waiting a long time for this. I'm very, very, very excited about it. Moving forward, I do see a couple of new permissions in uh, the permission sets associated with the Einstein Analytics licenses. So we have a new permission for uh, custom maps. So now we're going to be able to control which users can and cannot manage these, uh, as well as the share Einstein discovery stories uh, permission now also includes uh, the ability to export to R, although uh, it does appear to have disappeared since yesterday that was right here uh, next to where it said quip. So I don't know what's going on with that one, but I totally saw it and I should have screenshotted it when I had the chance, but I didn't. And while we're here, uh, I do also see a permission that now allows us to manage analytics in other users' private apps. And this has been something that has come up on the community a number of times. Uh, because it, it, you know, your data cap is something that you need to have tight control over. If somebody leaves the company, you can't delete it. Uh, you know, assets that are in their folder, maybe there's data flow associated with it. You're trying to figure out where this stray dashboard is that's preventing you from deleting a data set, and you got to log in as everybody. It's huge, huge, huge pain. And this has come up on the community a number of different times about people trying to find different ways to do it, and oh, workbench this, that, and the other. Well, it's actually not that new of a feature. It's been around for a full year. So how is it that I didn't know about it? Well, maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I'm gonna blame it on the fact that it actually wasn't added to the release notes until July 10th, long after uh, it was actually rolled out to production. Cool feature, <laughs> totally worth the wait. Uh, but yes, so we now have that feature as well. The next thing I saw had to do with embedding uh, assets on uh, record detail pages. I believe this also applies to app pages, but I didn't test. And then if we just come down here and grab it, there we go. Add this guy right here. It doesn't really matter which dashboard it is. This is uh, probably, yeah, one of those. We now have the ability to determine the open dashboard behavior. So previously this was just, you know, automatically gonna open an analytics studio. But now we can choose if we want it to open in Analytics Studio, if we want it to open in the Analytics tab, or if we want to disable the open dashboard feature entirely and only allow it to be viewed in an embedded context. Uh, next thing that I uh, came across was the template gallery. So now uh, we have this uh, new link on the left-hand side, and this is going to bring us to the template gallery. My understanding is that there is a lot of uh, work going on to improve templates, but I do believe that at this point, this is the same template list that we had in last release, although it has been reordered because for me, 99% of the time when I'm installing templates as a consultant going from client to client, it's usually gonna be sales and or service. Uh, so to have those right up front and center instead of three quarters of the way down the page that they're alphabetically listed, that's uh, you know pretty valuable to me. So having them up here in this recommended templates section. Uh, and the look and feel of this has changed a little bit, uh, but I do believe otherwise that it's pretty much the same as we've had in previous releases. We also see this surface right here when we go to create a new app. We're gonna see that uh, instead of just having the choice between a blank app and a template, it actually takes us directly to the template, uh, the, template interface, I guess you'd call it, template gallery. Oh yeah, because we have a button, it's called template gallery. Uh, and we do still have the option, of course, to create a blank app. And uh, one of these years, I'd really like the ability to uh, add our own custom icons because like everybody wants to use the icon, uh, the Einstein icon, but then it's also inconsistent with the uh, style of all the other ones. Me, I'm always using the light bulb and the island. But uh, what's your favorite app icon? Let me know in the comments. Watch lists also got some serious love, I hear, from a very reputable source. 
Honestly, I have absolutely no idea because I just found this out a couple of hours ago and I would have had to enable them like a week ago to let them start watch listing uh, or I wouldn't have anything to show for you. But uh, what we have down here um, where it's favorites created by me and shared with me, th this rightmost panel will get replaced by your watch list where you can basically kind of subscribe to different uh, dashboard components and it'll get trend lines over time. So apparently the update involves better trending functionality more details and overall improvements to stability, which may have had something to do with the reason why uh, last release's video was subtitled Pete Breaks Everything. Moving swiftly ever onward, we now actually have a new button up here for learning resources. And this is not duplicative of the ones that we uh, have uh, over here, which also I forgot to mention, uh, these have been rebranded a little bit. These are learning topics here. And uh, when we talk about learning topics, uh, this was, uh, most of this was added last release, but a lot of the, uh, the look and feel of this interface has changed with this release. I do believe that most of this content was here already though. I think the elements in popular topics is new, uh, but we see our uh, release notes right down here. Currently it's spring 20, it says spring 20 because the summer 20 release notes are not yet available. But when we are talking in a dashboard context, this is relate, uh, relating to the onboarding feature that I covered in a video with Katie Augustus, uh, I believe two releases ago. So now we're gonna be able to see anything that we've embedded using custom onboarding in uh, the dropdown for learn. And uh, those are going to show up on the right here. So this is one, uh, we've got a total number down here and whatever we click on, it's gonna show us uh, which one it's talking about. We've got some nice numbering. And then uh, I didn't want to rickroll everybody again, so I used uh, the, the Honest Trailers for Waterworld, which, <laughs> great, great YouTube channel. Um, we're not gonna go there though. So another really cool feature uh, that we have is an update to subscriptions. And I haven't actually uh, had an opportunity to mess with subscriptions yet. Uh, this came out uh, relatively recently. But if you have this enabled and you do need to have uh, a checkbox in settings for it because it is currently in beta, uh, if you do have that setting enabled, you're going to see uh, on your dashboard a little uh, email envelope, or perhaps it's a snail mail envelope. I guess it is a snail mail envelope. And this is going to allow you to subscribe to a dashboard. I believe current state, you uh, just get uh, an, a screenshot of it. But the feature that has been added is that now we're gonna be able to uh, subscribe with individual components, but it's also going to, in addition to uh, sending us a screenshot, it's going to uh, send us a CSV version of the data that is contained within the lens that we're uh, subscribing to. So another really cool feature that we've got is an update to the blended data UI. So again, this is something that you do need to enable in setup. And this was added in last release, and it's a really, really awesome feature, but uh, they didn't quite have all of it finished uh, just yet. So now we have the, uh, now uh, one thing to call out is uh, a lot of people have asked me, I can't get this to work, the button seems to be grayed out. If you add any kind of grouping, for example, I'm just gonna add stage as a grouping, now we see that the button is grayed out. Uh, we, have to in, uh, we have to add all of our data sets to the query, before we start making any changes to it. So if I wanted to add you know, another uh, DTC opportunity data set, um, I would have to add that to uh, this lens before I actually do anything. And this is gonna crash out and it's not because of anything wrong with data blending. It's just because I haven't accessed this data set in a really, really long time. So if you ever see this er uh, error, your data set has not been queried in a while, we're recovering your data, please check back in a few minutes. It basically means it went into cold storage. And it's a lot better than the error message that we used to get, which was just that, you know, it made you think that the data set was broken. And now we actually have a nice explanation of why, but I'm always happier as a user when something breaks and it tells me what's wrong and it tells me what I need to do about it. So I'm gonna see if it's ready now. And it looks like it is, it's awake. So we can add uh, different KPIs here. So for example, some of them. And so now I've got some of amount is coming off of one data set and nope, I did that wrong. They're both on the same data set. More DTCs versus DTCs. And uh, previously this was really all we could do. We could show these two things together. So for example, for, uh, I'm gonna go to my bar chart settings and I'm gonna change this to uh, single axis. Whoa, no I'm not, maybe dual axis. That makes a lot more sense. 
And then I'm going to add groupings from both of these data sets. And this was really about as far as you could take it. And for me, the first use case that came to mind was, well, I'd like to take my opportunity data set and my quota data set, put them together, apply some filters, and then simply uh, get a percentage to goal using a compare table calculation. But unfortunately, that wasn't available uh, in the minimum viable product launch for data blending. Uh, but we do have that feature now. So now we're going to be able to actually calculate those deltas. So in this case, I've got my counter rows and my sum of them out. So if I just do B over A, this would be my, uh, my average. And it looks like the column alias does automatically populate now. Um, previously, this would be blank, and the column would get assigned C if you did nothing. I'm pretty sure that's new, and I just noticed it as I'm looking at it now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. And this calculation is now coming from both data sets combined. Clicks not code. Uh, and there it is. There's our, there's our average. Um, so that's a really, really awesome feature to come to the UI. Uh, again, Salesforce's total commitment to uh, making this tool as easy to use as possible and with the minimum necessary uh, code updates to get to uh, the insights that you're looking for. Uh, another really awesome feature that I did not find by myself, uh, I also didn't find subscriptions either, uh, or watch list, but the, uh, we now have uh, a feature that was added last release was the ability to add dynamic reference lines that normally would require bindings and technically actually are still using bindings, but to be able to create those uh, interactive elements clicks not code. So if you find any video where I first was working with embedded dashboards and I created this, hooray, it's a dashboard, or maybe last release when I had the Waterworld trailer up on it, uh, you might notice that it used to say it's a dashboard, hooray, on two separate lines. Well, the reason why is because this is now dynamic text, which is the new feature that was added this release. And I just can't figure out how to get line breaks to work. Uh, but basically, right down here, I have a very simple static selector and it's passing its value to that dashboard component. So as I click through the different options on a static step, I'm getting different text. Now, obviously, that's kind of basic. Why do I need to be able to cycle through text with a, with a, with a toggle widget? But what this is actually intended for is to be able to pull values from different queries. So if you want to know, you know, uh, if you want to have a dynamic text widget that says your number one account is universal containers, with uh, you know record quarterly performance of you know a bajillion widgets, and you want to be able to display that kind of information to a user, you no longer have to create bindings to do that. So taking a look at the interface for this, we can still also hard code text into this uh, by just typing in it. And we, uh, I would assume, and I haven't tested, I'm going to find out right now. Uh, I believe that we can actually also have multiple uh, bindings created in this as different variables. So I'm gonna try it on the fly here. Uh, I'm gonna select my query, and I'm gonna try that equipment query over there, and I'm gonna select uh, the equipment field. My guess is that it's gonna return a 320 because that's the first row, and there it is. Yeah, we're getting a 320 just by doing that. And we can choose either result or selection uh, for you know different behavioral pro uh, elements. See my binding videos for, for more on the distinction between results and selection. But uh, just something to watch out, and this is, this is true for like number widgets as well. If you have a grouped query, it's always going to pull just that first row. So you want to make sure that you're either putting a, a limit on this. If you want to see what your top account is, you would just put a limit of one on this before you grab that. And, you know, hey, your top three accounts are limit one, limit two, limit three. I can think of all kinds of cool stuff that I'm going to do with this because I'm just reflecting back on all the times that I've done crazy stuff with bindings just to be able to get dynamic text strings. Uh, and actually a project I've been working on recently uh, for one of my clients has that a lot. So really great feature, really happy to uh, see it come to the UI. But as long as we've got this dashboard open, let's take a look at the next one. So I'm going to uh, explore this widget and it's, throw, it's throwing a little warning at me because, you know, hey, yes, you've, you've got a binding that's going over to here. So by the way, if you're making changes to this, there's a good chance you could break what's going on over here. But I uh, don't think we're necessarily going to do that. Now, if I had a query that was in SQL mode, um, we ran into a problem. And first, I'm going to show you what that problem is. Now, 
if I wanted to get the, uh, the bottom account right here, I would just flip and click on counter rows right there. And now we've got the ones that are way at the bottom. Also, by the way, there is that dynamic text is updating. So now I'm gonna click counter rows again. It's not sorting at all. And if I click counter rows a third time, I'm back to the sort descending. And the problem that we were running into was as soon as I flip this into SACL mode, by just making a simple change like this, like I'm gonna say, we're gonna call this column number instead of count because you know I'm uninspired and that's all I can think of at the moment. Update, there we go. We would not be able to click and sort by this. And I've seen so many threads on the community about people getting frustrated, like what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And the answer is you would have to make a separate static step to be able to bind into that order by parameter. Not anymore. So let's try it out. What did I do? Oh, I know what I did. I think it's because, <laughs> I think it's because I didn't change column map maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's a defect or what, but apparently that's supposed to be a thing. Uh, it looks like it was at least trying to do that thing. So that was my first time trying it out. And yes, yes, I'm gonna leave that in the video. So let's take a look at some other really cool stuff. This is gonna be the last of it, but there's a few really, really awesome updates to this piece. So uh, who here likes functional gaps? Because I don't know about you guys, I really don't like functional gaps. And any time that there's something I can do in the standard report builder that I can't do in Einstein Analytics, that's a functional gap and that bothers me. And one of them that we have had for the longest time, uh, I'm just gonna put a couple of different values in here, like you know, maybe my sum of amount, and uh, I guess I do still want those that counter rows, and you know, then I'm gonna group by stage, you know, or maybe instead of counter rows, I'll do a, I'll do a fun one because this is one that people always like seem to forget exists, but it's super useful. I want the number of unique accounts that are in these stages. So uh, then, if I wanted to add maybe a second grouping, and we're gonna like look at this over time, I want to look at this by you know, say closed eight year quarter, and then I go to pivot it. Well, the problem is I only get one measure in a pivot. Oh, look at that. Now I get multiple measures in the pivot, just like I can do in standard reports. How many measures can we do in the pivot? I actually have no idea. So let's see if we can just, you know, make it angry. I figured there's, there's probably a limit. If I had to guess, I'm gonna say maybe four, but I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Can I add a fifth? I think at this point I gotta start going to some more uniques. Unique account owner. So now we've already exceeded what can be done uh, in the Salesforce UI. No, actually no, because we can add formulas. I was just thinking, uh, you know, sum, max, min, you know, how many, how many can we add? Apparently we can add a lot. All right, well, I'm convinced. We can add enough to make it a horrible user experience because this is now a wall of numbers and not knocking the product. It's awesome that the product can do it, but you as a designer should not build like this. Uh, it's just too hard to read. And uh, the other feature that I understand that this now has is the ability to sort on these pivot groups. Um, I don't know how, let's, let's try it. Uh, can I sort by this? Yeah, it looks like I can sort by this. Uh, don't know how, how useful that is uh, with a calendar component, but uh, if we're filtering by like, in, or if we're grouping by industry or opportunity type, then it's gonna make a whole lot more sense. Uh, the other feature that we now have that was previously not supported in pivots, and in my opinion is, is mission critical for them, so I'm really glad to see this, uh, if I can figure out how to do it. Um, yeah, there we go. So conditional formatting rules. We can now add uh, conditional formatting to highlight uh, our cells uh, exactly as we can in other tables, or at least I would assume exactly as we can. I'm, you know, again, I'm making this up as I go along. So we're gonna just do greater than, let's do a uh, greater than 12 million because that'll get something to show up. And pick me a color, yep, and we do have the exact same functionality that we have in the UI, which is to pick both a background color, or not in the UI, but in other table types, to pick both a background color and a text color. This is probably gonna be really, really ugly. Not as bad as I was expecting, but still like, wow, Pete, you're terrible at like 
color theory. Just take an art class, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, that's all the new features I was able to find for uh, this release. And again, uh, some of them I did get little uh, hints from the product team. So I want to thank everybody that uh, contributed to me being able to put together uh, a nice video for you guys. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching.